creek Walk them up and down in the summer heat Same old boy changing like the seasons Country kid turn it to a town right heathen Hey everybody, welcome back to Old Man Van Running. Here again in the Old Man Van Cave, the Old Man Van Castle. It's September 14th, 2024. Four weeks and one day from the Chicago Marathon. But today, that's not what we're going to talk about. We're finally going to get to my first impressions review, and actually a full review because I've been wearing them a while, of the A6 Super Blast 2. So before we do that, before I give you that review, let's get out on the trail and see how one of my runs this morning went in the A6 Super Blast 2. Say so hey everybody, training's back in gear here. I'm at the Quinnipiac River Trail here in Wallingford, Connecticut. It is, let me see, it is I believe the 14th of September 2024. My Chicago Marathon training's back on track. I'm here today to do just a nice five to six mile easy run in preparation for tomorrow's 18 miler. So just gonna take it easy. We're in the Super Blast 2 from ASICS. Haven't done that review yet, so that's why I'm out here uh, with the video. And uh, I'm gonna take them out on their paces today. I've been wearing them quite a bit and I really like them, but gotta get some trail video for you. So, beautiful weather, it's right about mid-70s right now, close to 80. So, let's get out on the trail. nice out here a little bit muggier uh, a little bit warmer but still good keep that acclimation up I really like the Super Blast 2's you know they didn't screw them up from the previous version so I'm liking them a little bit heavier you know more substantial upper maybe a tiny bit of extra weight but a little bit softer not too much I've heard people say that, you know, they're pretty firm. I'll tell you, they're not as firm as the Glycerin GTS 21, I don't think. And, uh, you know, they are firmer than the Neo Vista, especially the Skyward X. So, you know, a little bit firmer, but I don't see an issue with wearing these for a marathon, to be honest. Nice six mile run, relatively easy the day before my 18 miler, which will be September 15th, which is only 28 days, four weeks from the Chicago Marathon. So I wore the Super Blast 2s today, felt really good. I've had a number of other runs in them, so no issues whatsoever. Really like them. Like I said, not as firm as some reviewers have said. Um, a little more cushion than the previous version. We'll go into more of the details in the old man van cave so let's get back so there you have another great run in the super blast 2. you know the big concern with the original super blast was that a6 was going to change things right you know the old adage if it ain't broke don't fix it well everybody was crossing their fingers that a6 wouldn't do that you know people were going out trying to find the original version to have another pair or two or extra pairs so that 
if they did make a big change, it, it wouldn't impact it so much. The other part of that was that it was pretty expensive, right? I paid $220 when I originally bought it. It did eventually come down to right around 200 or a little bit less, but that's a significant price tag, right, for a daily trainer. So both of those things kind of played into the angst around the launch of the Super Blast 2. So the big question I'm going to answer here today is did A6 improve the Super Blast 2 or did they make some changes that really brought it down a peg? But before we do that, let's get right into the all important numbers. Now, Super Blast 2 right here comes in at $200, right? $199.95. So the original version when it was launched was $220 US. $200 is a lot better. If you recall my review of the previous version, I thought it would be best around $170, $175. But, you know, $200, if the shoe is durable and versatile, isn't such a bad price these days. Now going on to weight, there have been a few minor changes to the Super Blast 2 that we'll get into details in a few minutes. Weight just went up just slightly from 8.4 ounces in a men's size 9 originally, which was somewhere around 230 plus grams, to 8.5 ounces in a men's size 9 or 250 grams. Now this is a unisex shoe, so you know the women's numbers, I don't have the accurate woman's numbers right there. There's not a woman's version, but you get the picture, right? Just a slight increase, nothing major, nothing noticeable. Stack height, that remains the same. We got more than the legal amount for racing, right? So if you're an elite racer, professional racer, you can't wear the Super Blaster race in. But for us mere mortals, right? This extra stack height above 40 millimeters is no issue. So we've got 45 millimeters of stack height in the rear foot, 37 millimeters in the forefoot for that magical heel to toe drop of eight millimeters. So pretty much exactly the same as the original version. Okay, so let's get into construction now. First, this upper. This upper is a woven engineered mesh upper, softer, thicker, more pliable than the original Super Blast, uh, much more comfortable. If you look at the original Super Blast right here, you see it's more sandpapery, it's thinner, but it's nowhere near as comfortable as the new version. Now, you don't have much overlays whatsoever in this upper. You can see right here, you just have kind of woven in there. It's not even an overlay. The ASICS logo, no real overlays. You do have right here in the toe box some internal reinforcement around the toes. Nothing major there. Not an issue like the Gel K Ano 30 that I had a problem with. So really good there. Now, right here around the eyelets, you do have some reinforcement that's not there in the original version. This upper I really like. It's breathable. It's a little heavier. It's more traditional. It's a little softer. It really doesn't add a lot of weight, so we're only a 0.1 ounce heavier in this shoe. So no issues with that upper. I like the improvements. Moving around to the heel counter, there is some structure in there. Not a lot. It's pretty much the same as the previous version. Heel and ankle collar are nice and well padded, as you can see here. Very well padded. You have a fully gusseted tongue there. Fully gusseted tongue. Same tongue as in the original version. It's very comfortable. It's not that thick, but it's got padding in strategically placed areas. Here you can see that right here. So that prevents, you know, too much pressure on the top of your foot. Laces are nice and flat. You know I like flat laces. They don't stretch pretty much the same as in version one. And that sock liner is also removable. So if you do want to wear aftermarket insoles or orthotics, this will accommodate them. Moving on to that midsole, right? That's the big thing. There's been a tweak there. Instead of just flight foam turbo, the main part of this midsole is flight foam turbo plus. It's softer than the previous version, but it's just as springy. In fact, it might be even a little more springy. It's resilient. It's not squishy soft. And then underneath here, you've got a layer of flight foam blast plus eco. Same thing you had in the previous version. 
This midsole is more comfortable than the previous version, and I really liked the previous version. Plenty of softness here, just the right amount as far as I'm concerned. Now to the outsole, they've gone to this Asics Grip outsole, which is supposed to be a little tackier, grippier than the previous version, also supposed to be a little more durable. I was a little concerned when I reviewed the Gel Cano 31 that it was a little softer and maybe it wouldn't be as durable. So far, so good. I'm not getting any undue wear out here where I normally get it on the outside of the lateral heel, nor am I getting too much wear right here in the forefoot. So I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to be a more durable outsole than the original Super Blast. Now to stability. This is a neutral shoe, but it is a stable neutral shoe. In fact, I think it's the best stable neutral shoe out there for a number of reasons. First of all, this nice wide base, wide in the heel, wide through the midfoot, wide through the forefoot, gives you a real wide stable base. You can see it here, how it flares out in the front, how it's wide in the back, kind of angles toward the medial side so it gives you some protection from overpronating. Just a real wide, wide base. Now, the other thing that the original Super Blast did well is the sidewalls. Here you see the sidewalls on the lateral side. You see the sidewalls on the medial side. Your foot is cupped in there. And in fact, the sidewalls in the Super Blast 2 are a little bit, I think, deeper or higher than the previous version. And your foot just sits right in there. Those sidewalls keep you from moving too much from side to side, again, like the bumpers on a bowling alley, right? So as you start to go in, it pushes you back, keeps you centered. Additionally, you have this groove in the center that also helps to kind of spread the forces and keep you moving forward. I also think the geometry helps not only with performance, but also stability. You've got this nice bevel in the rear foot, and then you've got this nice rocker in the forefoot. So it's a very efficient roll through the gait cycle, which I think keeps you centered as well. Now to performance. I think this is the most versatile shoe out there. It's a shoe you can take on short, easy runs. It's got enough cushioning there with that big stack height, right? It's also a shoe that's very light. It's a shoe that's got super foam in it, so it's resilient, it's springy. It's got the nice geometry that really helps roll you through the gait cycle. It's a very good shoe at all paces. In fact, it's a shoe that many folks who don't want to buy a carbon fiber racing shoe, one of those super shoes, reach for this shoe as their primary race shoe. I have a friend, a young friend, who's a very, very fast runner in his late 20s, who swears by this shoe for racing. He ran a 302 marathon in this, his PR, and he just can't get enough of this shoe. I will tell you for me, it's a shoe that I take on short, easy runs, but it's a shoe that I reach for when I'm doing those tempo paces, you name it, this shoe is perfect for that. Performance-wise, I think this is the most versatile shoe on the market today. Comfort, amazing comfort. Great step in comfort, right out of the box, no issues whatsoever. I like how your foot kind of sits cupped in there. There's a little more arch support, I feel, in this version than the previous version. That makes it more comfortable for me. There's a little more room in the toe box, so it's more accommodating for my feet. There's a little more lockdown in the midfoot, so that's great too. There's really nothing negative I can say about comfort. This is one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn, and it's a shoe that when I really want to pamper my feet and have a real comfortable run, I do reach for this shoe. Not a value. In the original version, I had a few concerns, right? It was $220 when I purchased it. It did go down, you know, just around $200 or a little bit south. I was worried about the durability of that outsole and how valuable that would be over time for that price point. But I will say that I think the Super Blast 2 is a much better value than the first version. First of all, it's only $200. I know that's a lot of coin, but I think that outsole is more durable. So far, it seems to be. If that's the case and I can get, you know, 350, 400 miles on this shoe with all the things this shoe can do, I think that's a pretty decent value. It's that close to a super shoe. So let's get right to it. What's my rating of the A6 Super Blast 2? As I mentioned, I gave the original version a 9.35. 
you know, with all the 9.4s and 9.5s I'd be giving out, you say, man, you hated that shoe. No, I didn't. It was just really expensive. I was worried about the wear. Now that's changed. I'm actually going to go above 9.5 for this shoe. I'm going to give this shoe a 9.6 out of 10. 9.6. Okay, it's not a 9.75. Why is that? Only, only, only because of the outsole, right? I still have a little bit concern that it's going to be tough to get, say, 350, 400 miles. Otherwise, it would be a 9.75. But I'm going to give it a 9.6. I think that's a great score. And it is a great score. Hey, over the next couple of months, putting a lot more miles on this shoe, I'm sure I may come back and say, hey, you know what? I got plenty more miles than I thought I would in this shoe, and I'm going to give it a higher score. But for now, I'm going to give it a 9.6. Going from a 9.35 to a 9.6 is a pretty dramatic improvement. And I'm going to say, the small incremental improvements that ASICs made to this shoe, in aggregate, make it a big jump. So there you have it. Great job, ASICs, with the Super Blast 2. I highly recommend this shoe to pretty much everybody out there. And I'm going to tell you, I'm really looking forward to getting a lot more miles in it and having this shoe help me get through the rest of my Chicago Marathon training. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll get notified when more videos are posted. Comments, 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 any and all comments really does help my channel. And as always, if you have friends, running pals, acquaintances, co-workers, family members that you feel might enjoy the Old Man Van Running channel, please let them know. Now coming up soon, upon request from some of the subscribers, I will do a comparison of the Super Blast 2 and the Mizuno Neo Vista. Also coming up, I have a review of the Hyperion Max 2 from Brooks and the Hoka Skyward X. So thanks again, everybody. I really do appreciate the support. Look forward to getting more videos out there. Hope you're all doing well in your running. And remember, lace up those shoes and let's get out on the roads. Railroad tracks run along the creek. Walk them up and down in the summer heat. Same old boy changing like the seasons. Country kid turn it to a town right heathen. Turn into a town